G'day folks, it's Roger Quinn here and in this video we're going to have a look at how to create comic book text balloon or comic style text balloons like that sort of thing just there um, and this is in Photoshop and it's a relatively easy and very quick method for doing this so um, let's have a look I've got a, uh, a black and white uh, comic there um, where I've used a technique in, in both the colour and black and white one. So I'll just demo it here and then I'm sure you'll get the idea for how you can create that effect uh, using colour fields if you want to. All right. So I'll just go now to um, a version of this cartoon that doesn't have the speech balloons and I'll put one of them on. But just before I go to that though, essentially why, the way this works is it's using uh, a layer effect. Okay. And it's setting a, a layer effect that's basically going to automate the white fill, okay, that's going uh, behind the speech balloons, and also the outline. And what's really great about this is um, anything that you add, for example, a little pull-out section going to the mouths, or if you want to um, join some speech balloons together. I don't actually have any on there. I might have one on this one, I think. Yeah, okay, so for example, this thing just here, which I can just zoom up on. Um, it's the easiest way of doing that. Okay, like that. Okay, so you can see the one there where I've got this sort of oval shaped one, a little bird down here is speaking one part, and then it's linking over the cross there. The beauty of this technique is that those uh, joins and effects are automatically uh, created, so you don't have to go in there and you know use vectors or something to join this. Okay, so let's have a look at what I'm talking about. Uh, sorry, I'll just go to this one. Okay, now let's just say we want to add a speech balloon to this panel here. <clears throat> okay, so what you do... Um, oh, I've already got a, a layer set up there. I'll do one from scratch just so that you can see what we're up to. So I'll just... Uh, sorry, delete that one. Yes, go away. There we are. And I'll just add a new layer. I'm going to call this Balloons. Okay, and I'm going to double click that layer and that brings up the layer style options. And now incidentally I'm working in Adobe Photoshop CS6 and I'm quite confident you can certainly do this same effect in 5, pretty sure 4 and probably 3 as well I seem to recall. Anyway, um, it's really as simple as this. You activate, whoops, that's my crazy mouse going nuts there. You activate the stroke, okay? And I'm just going to set that to probably a size of three. Okay, I'm going to leave the other things on there as uh, default for the moment. It's not going to touch anything else on there. The color is significant here because that's going to give me a black outline to my speech balloon. And I won't do anything else on, on that layer style. And the other thing I'm just going to keep my eye on, eye on is what I've got my foreground and background colour set to. Um, and in the case of this black and white cartoon, it's just set to um, black foreground, white background. Um, that becomes important if you're working in colour and you wanted a colour um, speech balloon. Okay, But in this case, I'm just using white. Anyway, it's as simple as this. I then will grab a uh, elliptical uh, marquee. Uh, what is important here, just make sure you've got feather turned off. Okay, so um, I've got feather turned off. <coughs> it's just set to naught. The anti-aliasing you can leave on. That's going to give it a slightly uh, uh, smoother edge. Anyway, then I'll just make sure that I am working on that layer, which I am. I'll just draw a speech balloon you know, roughly there. Of course, what I should have done is, um, like every good comic artist, I should be aware of exactly what I need to write in there and make sure that I've left space, which indeed I did do when I planned this comic. Okay, so I knew that I was going to have space there. Anyway, uh, and all you do with that uh, selection drawn, go up to uh, or use one of the filters. I'll just use the actual menu fill. Okay, I'm going to make sure that the uh, contents it's using uh, is background color because I want it to use the white and hit OK and there it is okay there's the effect I'll just undo the selection there 
Okay, so it's automatically made the white circle, put a black outline around it, but here's the great bit. If I now go back in and I'm on the same layer and I want to add, obviously, a little um, connection there to indicate that it's coming from this girl's mouth, then I'll grab another one of the selection tools and just draw a selection where I want that. And same process again. Now remember, just pointing out I'm on exactly the same layer, so it's going to apply the same effect. Okay, so it's automatically going to put that outline. But the good thing is it just joins it to the one that's already there. So I'll just go to fill once again. Background color is still set, so it's going to be white with a black outline. And check it out. Okay, automatically joins it up, which I think is pretty cool. And obviously because that's a separate layer, you can still you know move that around if you need to if you need to adjust it okay um, but that's really the the beauty of that technique and then obviously the text itself is just put on and as a separate text layer on top of that you could group them together if you need to um, or not I usually keep all my layers separate but that's essentially how that technique works uh, and you can really use any um, method that you want to to uh, create the selection so as an example, if you you know didn't really want to have these very angular and straight little um, tags off the end of the speech balloon, you might prefer to use a different style. Uh, so some of the things I occasionally use, for example, um, have I got one on this page? No, I don't. It doesn't matter. What I was going to show you is that if you want a more elaborate sort of connection to that, let's just say we wanted this guy over here to be connecting to that speech balloon, um, you could, for example, use the... Um, uh, the pen tool. Okay, if you wanted to make some particularly um, unique shape to that selection. So I'm just using the pen tool now to draw first of all the shape that I want. Okay, I'll just do this quick and dirty because you'll get the idea I'm sure. Okay, there's my path and then I'm going to just simply use the path menu with that quick path there selected tell it to make a selection. Once again, double checking that I don't have a feather turned on because I just want this to be a flat selection. And there it is. Go back to my layers, make sure I'm definitely on the balloon layer with the stroke effect. Just same thing again, fill. And background color is set, it is white. And there you go. So hide the selection and there it is, joining automatically to that speech balloon. So for me, I found that this is Pretty much the fastest method that I've experimented with to create speech balloons. I've tried using um, uh, vector programs like Illustrator to do this. I've tried other techniques in Photoshop. Uh, I've tried exporting, you know, the, the Photoshop file to InDesign and other page layout programs to, to create the speech balloons. But frankly, this to me seems to be the most versatile and certainly fastest method to create speech balloons. Okay, something I didn't mention that I probably should have done uh, is the resolution you're working at. Okay, I'm working at this file, it's roughly an A4 size page, resolution of 200. So the actual stroke thickness that you put on that um, layer will have some significance depending on the resolution you're working at. So you might find you've got to experiment a little bit with the size that you want that stroke to be. Uh, depending on, on the output that you want to use. Okay. Anyway, give that a go. See if it works for you. As I said, it's pretty quick and straightforward and um, hope it works. See you later.